the other day we went to an Amish store in Salem, Arkansas, and one of the things we got was this pumpkin. We found out it's a Seminole pumpkin, um, grown by Seminole Indians years and years ago in Florida, from what I've read, and it's a pie pumpkin. Shay's gonna cut it in half so that we can scoop the seeds out roast it and put it up in the freezer so we have the pie filling or pumpkin for pumpkin bread. Um, it's real good if your dog is having stomach problems to give them you know, a tablespoon or two of pure pumpkin, no spices or anything in it. So it's just nice to have in the freezer, but he'll cut this in half. It's a really hard skinned pumpkin. That's why he's having problems with it. Um, let me see. Did you get that in half yet, mister? Looky there. It looks like an overgrown butternut squash. But it's not. It's a Seminole pumpkin. If they hang, they get this shape to them. If they're on the ground, they get a squattier shape. Well, that smells good, don't it? It does smell good. So we're going to, this is all seeds in there. We're going to scoop all that out so we can roast it. The flesh is where we're going to be getting our pumpkin puree from. Good job, though. I learned from a lot of pumpkin carving that the best way to scoop the guts out, is what I call it, is with a big old spoon. Just turn it on its side. You want that hairy looking stuff out too. You don't need it. We could save these seeds and dry them out and grow them next year. But we really don't have room for a pumpkin patch. It gets really big. We could wash them off and put some olive oil on them and some salt and pepper, seasonings. You could even do ranch flavored and roast them in the oven. But we're not huge fans of pumpkin seeds. I think that they're called pepitos or something. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to give them back to our chickens so that they will lay us more eggs. There are options. It's not a hard job. Some people get a little grossed out. It's just a vegetable, folks. You just get all that hairy stuff down to the flesh. My, my chickens are going to like that. When I roast it, I'm going to roast it in a 400 degree oven. I'll put these on a parchment lined cookie sheet that I sprayed with a little bit of coconut cooking spray just so we don't stick to the parchment paper and I'm going to roast it for 45 minutes to an hour I'll check it at 45 and if I think it's done I'll take it out let it cool and then I'll scrape the flesh away from the skin I should hopefully get at least six cups of pumpkin out of this. Is what I'm hoping for. Let me go ahead. You're going to turn it cut side down on your cookie sheet. This pumpkin was washed. It was clean and washed before we cut it. You don't want to transfer any of that dirt into your pumpkin. Pumpkins are members of the squash family. They're a winter squash. A winter squash doesn't grow in the winter. The difference between a winter and a summer squash is summer squash are thinner skinned and they don't hold up for storage well 
winter squash have a real thick skin and you can have them in the winter if you keep them in a cool place, cool dark place like a basement. You can store them all winter and, and have squash, pumpkins to eat throughout the winter. That's why they're called winter squash. Some varieties like the Zucano Rampicante that we grow is multi. If you pick it green, it's a summer squash. Use it just like you would a long neck or a crooked neck yellow squash. If you leave it on the vine, it'll ripen and turn a, a pinkish tan color. Looking looks a lot like a butternut squash and tastes like a butternut squash. Well, because you let it ripen, the skin got harder and it's now a winter squash. It's a good squash to grow. You could turn this into a jack-o'-lantern if you wanted to. When you make jack-o'-lanterns, you're not stuck with just regular jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. You can use winter squash too. A um, long time ago, they carved turnips and set them out at Halloween. We're going to eat this one. Okay, we have the pumpkin cut in half. We've scooped the seeds and the guts out. We've got it on a parchment lined cookie sheet that's been sprayed. And we're going to roast it at 400 degrees in a preheated oven for 45 minutes to an hour. All right, I just got this one out of the oven. Um, we had to do them separately because they were so big. This is after I've peeled all the peeling off. So all of that you're seeing is meat and I'll put it, probably put it in the food processor, blend it really good. And then um, I'll show you in a little while how we're gonna store it. But yeah, this one just came out of the oven. <laughs> And what we noticed with that one, it came out looking just as tall and pretty. And as it cooled, see how it's kind of caving in? It, it landed like that. It just collapsed. But yeah, we're going to use something called uh, Super Cubes to freeze this pumpkin flesh in. Um, and then we will proceed to vacuum seal it. Okay, we got our pumpkin baked and we had to let it cool because you got to peel that skin off. And I wound up peeling some of it and some of it using a knife and peeling it. But we have all of this pumpkin and we have what's in the food processor and I'm going to puree it. Um, and after we get it all pureed, I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do with it from there. Four. Okay, we have put all of that pumpkin through our food processor just to get this nice texture right here. Um, I didn't use all the liquid, but most of the liquid that had cooked out of the pumpkin. If you were going to do pumpkin pies is all you were going to use it for, now you can go ahead and put your spices in for your pumpkin pie and freeze it that way. This can also be used for baby food. You could do what we're going to do though. <laughs> this could also be done for baby food is we're using a regular ice, food, ice tray and I'm going to put the pumpkin puree in it. And after they freeze, we'll put them in a Ziploc bag and it's for our dogs. Um, if they have an upset stomach, pumpkin will actually stop it instead of giving Pepto you can just give raw uh, pureed pumpkin. Um, we'll do these ice cube trays, one or two of them. And then we have these really awesome food storage system uh, called super cubes. Don't mind the water spots because I've used these things constantly. There's the two cup 
It has a mark for one cup or two cups. You can see it's um, cups on this side, milliliters on that side. And then this smaller size is a half a cup or a cup. Now, most of your cans of pumpkin are 15 ounces, which would be right around two, two cups, a little, a little under two cups. So that's what we're going to freeze them in. We're going to freeze them in these super cubes. Um, and then after they freeze, we'll pop these little, they're perfect squares for storage in the freezer and we'll pop them out. Um, and we'll vacuum seal, seal them in our food saver. But, um, as for like, if you have leftover soup, chili, uh, anything, freeze them in, in these super cubes, which you can get online and on Amazon, I believe Costco started selling them, but you freeze them in these and don't mind that noise. It's one of our dogs. It's, um, Ollie has a new toy. <sighs> anyway, these things are great. Super cubes. S-O-U-P-E-R cubes. You can cook in them as, as well. They're not just for freezing. You could make mini lasagnas and then go ahead and freeze them in that. But today we're going to use them for our pumpkin. And like I said, after we freeze them, we will pop them out. These are silicone molds. It pops out super easy. And we'll vacuum seal them so they don't get any frost burn. We don't season this pumpkin. We use it for, like I said, the dogs. Uh, and we use it for all different kinds of pumpkin meals. And some are savory and some are sweet. Put a little bit more. There are marks on these cubes that tell you exactly where to, to fill them. To get a one cup or a two cup. And then you put your lid on it and you'll put it in the freezer and by tomorrow those will be frozen solid as a rock. And I'm going to go ahead and do a full cup in each one of these. I could do a half, but we're trying to get as close to um, what would be in a can of pumpkin. I'm kind of excited to see how many cans of pumpkin that one would equal. There's two. Once this is filled up, that would be six cans of pumpkin. We paid $6 for that Seminole pumpkin at the Amish market. And at the store, the cheapest I've bought it was 98 cents a can at a discount market. So I, I think we're going to get more than our money's worth. But that's where we're at. Okay, this is the next morning. And we have our pumpkin puree frozen. These are the ice cubes we've made for the dogs. I just wrote on my freezer bag what it is and put these in there. That way, if they need one, I can just take one out and defrost it in the microwave or uh, set it in the fridge for a little while to defrost. Anyway, that's the dog's pumpkin. Then we, this is our super cubes, <laughs> and they're hard as a rock. These are little silicone freezer cubes. If I was making, I could make little lasagnas in here. If I wanted to, just pop them out. These store so good in your freezer. Takes up a lot less space when they're in these um, perfect little rectangles. And I marked my bags, pumpkin one cup. Um, I'll date them as well. I should use them all in a year, which is what I like to do. But you just put them in here. Now this one I want to put two cups because that's about how much is in a can of pumpkin. 
or that's about how much I need for a pumpkin pie recipe. If you don't use it all, you can always take one of those out, refreeze it. All right, this is our food saver that a good friend gave us. This is going to vacuum seal so you don't have to worry about frostbite. It's loud and noisy. Uh Ceiling. This is, it is loud, sorry about that, but um, it gets all the air out and you're not going to have any kind of ice crystals form on your food or, or uh, frostbitten food by vacuum sealing it. And this is a good way to, to freeze things that, or to vacuum seal things that are normally uh, too wet is by doing them in the super cubes first. Freezing them into these blocks. We're using pre-made bags but you can buy you can buy pre-made in different sizes and you can also buy um, rolls of the bag material which is what this is and make whatever size you need yourself I'm just being lazy this morning I hit moist just in case there's any moisture. I think we wound up getting, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ten cups. 10 cups of, um, wait, 2, 4, 6, 8, we got 12 cups of pumpkin out of that one Seminole pumpkin, and we paid $6 for it, so basically 50 cents a, a can. How many ounces did you say was in a cup? I don't remember. Eight? 16 ounces in a pound, so I'm, I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. This is the two cup super cube. This is what I like to do um, leftover chili, beans, soup, things like that. I like to do in two cup portions. Set them down in my fridge the night before or put them in the defrost in your microwave. But I like to set them in the fridge the night before then for lunch the next day I can just heat, pour, it, pour it out of the bag and heat it up it's what? what was you want to know how many ounces are in a cup yes this is how we do it okay Google how many ounces are in a cup one cup is equivalent to eight fluid ounces. Eight okay. ounces. Then my math is wrong. Um, there's one, two, three, four. We got the equivalent of six cans of pumpkin out of that one pumpkin. There's, looks still, like, still looks like a lot more pumpkin than six cans. Well, these are two cups. Well, it's definitely more than two cans. Of it. There's, in a can of pumpkin, this 
15 ounces. And she just said there was eight ounces in a cup. So that's like two cups, a little under two. So now that we figured out we don't know how to do math. <laughs> we just got an $8 pumpkin and made a bunch of pumpkins. That's all we can tell you. We got a $6 pumpkin and made a bunch of pumpkin. We got we got more than it would more pumpkin out of that one pumpkin than if we had bought it at the store because it's a little over a dollar a can at most stores. The cheapest I've ever found it was ninety eight cents. And there's no preservatives in it. This is pure pumpkin. There's nothing extra been added to it. No food coloring. Uh, nothing. did not raise that pumpkin so we don't know what they used on it but I guarantee you they didn't use diesel fuel <laughs> I guarantee you um, unless I buy organic canned pumpkin it's gonna this is gonna have a lot less uh, extra I love how uniform, how uniform they are. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven cups. Eleven cups of pumpkin. And the dog pumpkin, which they love. No problem getting our dogs to eat that. And that's it. That's how we use the super cubes and the food saver and how you uh, harvest your pumpkin. You don't have to just let it sit out there on the porch and rot. You can bring it in and make pumpkin pie filling or whatever. Well, folks, that's how we turned our Seminole pumpkin into pureed popsicles. <laughs> hey, I want to say a shout out over there to uh, uh, Super Cubes. It's spelled like, you know, a can of soup. S-O-U-P. Super Cubes. Those things are handy as a pocket on a shirt. I'm telling you, you can put that stuff in the... Uh, in the super cubes and freeze it and it pops out and you can do that with like soups uh as you've seen we did it with pumpkins I anything that you want to freeze you know and maybe thaw out later they're the way to go super cubes all the way also i want to say uh since we've gotten our food saver vacuum sealer hey i like it don't have to worry about frostbite we suck all that stuff out and it actually seems like that it, it helps with storage, too, in the freezer. I don't know. Maybe it don't, but it seems to. It's it's definitely a lot, lot neater. A little bit loud, a little bit loud. But, hey, the Food Saver Vacuum Sealer, that thing's great. We love it. We love it. So I want to say a special thank you to those folks. Uh, go to their website. or uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, I don't know, foodsaver.com. Com. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, supercube.com and it's spelled S O U P. Supercube.com. But anyway, folks, thanks for coming to see us this weekend here at Little Nuts Farm. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Don't forget to like. Please just click the little thumb up there. Just hit like, subscribe, leave some comments. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.